there's so much I can say about her humble and still beast, right? Like beauty and still beast, phenomenal poet, been on the news. I mean, it's selling thousands and thousands, like tens of thousands of dollars of, um, of product and poetry books, international, all over the place, and she's here with us tonight. So with all of that said, let's make some noise for our feature tonight, our last feature for this night of the year. Let's clap it up, y'all, for Kira J. I was downtown clubbing, ladies night, seen shorty, she was crazy, right? And I approached baby like, ma, what's your age and type? She looked at me and said, you's a baby, right? I told her, I'm 18, I live a crazy life. And I know what the ladies like. Hey, y'all. My name is Kara J by way of New York City. So I'm Harlem, born and raised. Can I get a year? One more time for all my New Yorkers. Can I get a year? Yeah. Ooh, y'all honorary you New Yorkers tonight. Everybody say that ass. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm formally known as the professional male basher, and I'm here to talk shit about men. But you know, I turned 30 a couple years ago, and I was like, you know what? I might have to be nicer to these niggas before I can't get one. <laughs> and my first poem ever that I went viral in, how many, how many of y'all have ever heard me perform before? Oh, you were in for a treat. So my first piece I ever went viral with, it was called Now We're Even. And I said, I want you to stay up until 4 a.m. Wondering if I'm out creeping. I want you to try and force yourself to sleep, but your mind just won't stop thinking. I want you to feel so insecure that you question your appearance every hour. I want you to cry for me and beg, just simply give me all that power. And every time I leave the house, I want you to think I'm out with another man. I want to play with your emotions, baby, just because I can. And I want to tell you things that you know are lies and leave your judgment clouded. I want to know I messed up and see you hurt and not give a fuck about it. I want to take what I can take from you till our relationship runs its course. Then I want to watch you turn into me and not feel no remorse. And I want you to think that I'm going to change and wait for me still there is a statue. I want you to feel in competition while every nigga's laughing at you. I want to fuck with your heart so bad that it will take years to fully mend. And I want to fill your life with so much betrayal that you will never trust again. And just when your heart can't take no more, and your mind push you to leaving, I'll sit back with the biggest smile on my face and whisper, now we're even. So after I dropped that poem, they was like, it's really something wrong with this girl. But I am a certified lover girl. After that, you know, that was when I was getting through my breakup. How many people in the building have gone through a breakup? You know. I'm going through a breakup right now. It's been like five years, I just ain't let it go yet. <laughs> you know, it's different when you have a kid though, right? Because I gotta see your face every time that I look at my baby. <laughs> and she look just like him. So I'll be like, oh yes, I'm getting over this, I'm healing and I roll over and I see his face. I'll be like, ugh. But I did find someone after him because my daughter's father was a Scorpio. Oh, okay. ugh. So you know my pain. Everybody in the building knows that it's either a Scorpio, a Virgo, or a motherfucking Taurus. I did, I did meet somebody after him, though. I met somebody after him, and he was so sweet, he tried to love me back to life, which led me to write this next piece where I said, he said to call him on FaceTime. I said I can't because I don't look pretty. Because he was used to seeing me all done up when I'm out around our city. He had never saw my bare face before. He never saw my natural hair. And I was trying to stay cute for him. It turns out he didn't care. He said, you're most attractive to me when you look like yourself, truly. And what the fuck does being pretty mean when you have such natural beauty? I never wanted you because no flawless looks are the way you like to dress. I've always been more in tune with your spirit and the aura you possess. I said, but these girls out here are always on point and my looks just don't compare. Their hair, their skin, their bodies, even I can't help but stare. He said, now, I'm not knocking no one else because they're gorgeous. This is true. Those girls are all a 10 that's facts, but baby, so are you. See, I had this way about me where I would always put me down. 
But speaking negatively about myself just doesn't fly when he's around because he wanted to help me see me, unlike anyone I've ever dated. And he was trying to make me fall in love with those parts of me I hated and not in a manipulative way where he would own my self-esteem, but in an empowering way that would help me see just what I truly mean because I had undervalued myself so much that I didn't know my worth. Be it my character or my looks, I had forgot to love me first and he would look at me like I was the prettiest girl in the world and I always found it strange. But seeing me reflected through his eyes, my self-image began to change. A man that helps you let your guard down will put insecurities in their place. So for the world, I get all dolled up. But for him, I simply wash my face. And he was such a sweetheart. So after months of being patient with me, we finally decided that we would take it to the next level. Because you know how when you get out of a breakup, you got that long period of accidental celibacy and shit. So I was like, you know what, I think I'm finally ready to like trust him and lay down with him. And we made love and it was so trash. I was sitting on the edge of my bed like, we fall down. Can we get up? He like, Kara, where you going? Now it's time for so long. <laughs> I'm getting dressed. He's like, I thought you said you love me, but we'll sing just one more song. 90s kid shit. Thanks for doing your part. You sure are smart. You know, with me and you and my dog Blue, we can do anything that we want to do. do, 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 do. I was out of that shit so fast. And I learned that after that, you know, I'm not the type of woman that can spend all of that time getting to know somebody before I find out. From that day forward, you know, I like to let the sex come first. Before we think of things to say, before we dive into our most inner thoughts, let's get the fucking out the way. See, for me, bad dick is a deal breaker. No matter if you're smart or you're fine, so before I invest my energy into you, I need to know if it's worth my time. So we might fuck as soon as we meet once, twice, maybe three in a row, and if that chemistry is there, we can begin to get to know. Because the pressure of leading up to the physical is something that I can't take in the past that I made the mistake of investing in men that can't make me shake, so I need to know if my body can fuck with you. Before you're introduced to my spirit, because if you want to talk after you fail to make me come, I ain't even trying to hear it. <laughs> See, with most women, they pussy is they only possession. They let men work before they lay, be selective of who they let touch their bodies, but then give their hearts away. My prized possession is my energy, too. This vibe is rare to find, so you can penetrate this body before you get into my mind. The best things about me have nothing to do with the things that I do in the bed. I might let you get into these drawers, but I never let you get into this head. Plus, I've seen it too many times, these women that want to make men wait, thinking that playing a good girl role will somehow guarantee their fate. And then once he get what he want, he's going like a thief in the night. And your asses be DMing me crying, talking about, Kara, I did everything right. As women, we make sex this huge ordeal, but that's not always the case because sometimes it is about starting the future, but sometimes it's just about riding his face. <laughs> and if you get sex out the way early on and he doesn't go to get distant, that means he wasn't just trying to use you for sex, he might actually be consistent. Because if you fuck him and he changes up, then you know what he was there for. But if he stays around, then it's possible that it could mean something more, but someone told me I have to be very careful with who I let in between my thighs because it's never solely physical when you factor in them soul ties, but... Here's the thing, regardless of what you've been led to believe when it comes to men, they don't automatically get access to your soul. You have to invite them in so I could fuck you till the sun comes up and let you into deep in my lady parts, but having access to this pussy don't give you access to this heart. And I'm not trying to minimize the power of that physical connection, but I'm not about to act like giving him your heart is the same as giving him an erection. Because this perception of equating love to sex is a mentality that is dated. Yes, we've tied the two together, but they're not naturally related. See, someone could love you from the best parts of their soul and never want to lay you down. And a man could want to do all kinds of nasty shit to you and not want you to stay around. So this idea that sex has to be something special is a rule that I can't fathom because sometimes I want the love, but sometimes I just want the orgasm. <laughs> and that doesn't make me heartless, nor do I think guys are only good for sex. I just don't put too much pressure on that part. I'm more concerned with what comes next. So... Here's to the grown-ups doing grown-up things. Everybody can't relate, but if you're single and you're open-minded, I'm down to fuck on the first date. Yeah. All right, all right. That's for my baby mamas in the house. Any baby mamas? Team statistic. Ooh. 
And that is another poem that when men hear, it either goes one of two ways. They're either like, I fuck with her and her honesty, or they're like, somebody got to get this bitch some help. I tell people this all the time. I am in no way, shape, or form qualified to hold the space that I do, but I hold it anyway. Yeah. I've sold over 30, 40, 50,000 books. I've never been to college. I'm not, I'm not a therapist, but I, I, I hold space as one sometimes, and I speak. So I need the permission before I perform this next piece. Um, do I have permission on everybody in the room to hold this intervention? Yeah. OK, um, that was a verbal consent. So that means that if this shit don't work out for you after you hear this piece, you can't sue me. <laughs> so after I spent a few years having first day sex, I realized one day, like, <laughs> shit was lit, I'm not gonna lie. But you know, one day I woke up and I realized I need help. I go through too much bullshit by not loving myself. It's like, I love me in theory on the surface for sure, but it gets contradicted by the bullshit that I settle for. Trying to help everyone out when my life is a mess. I be double texting niggas screaming, don't settle for less. I be speaking love into women when it's me who needs it most because I'm in love with a man that I can't even post. Saying the words are not enough, your actions must match. You can't constantly speak loud about them things that you lack. I scream self-love so loud and so proudly you see it's like I love everyone but no one's loving me. Because when did loving yourself equate to you feeling used? Having your body mishandled and your emotions abused, having your heart feel discarded and your mental neglected, your self-esteem minimized and your soul unprotected, I put myself through so much by stepping down from that throne. Because if I really loved me, I'd be sitting alone, not looking for no man to provide the love I never gave me, so desperate for a happy end and I sit and wait for them to save me, I guess. Fairy tales did more harm to us than they did good. Because all the stories are misleading and maybe I misunderstood. Because when does Sleeping Beauty get up and take her feelings off the shelf and stop waiting for the nights to come and fucking save herself now? I'm not saying that men can't help you. That's not at all what I mean, sis. I'm saying that you could either be the damsel in distress or be the queen, sis. I'm saying that the man you get is determined by the woman you are, so you're going to have to choose playing that I need a man to save me game as a guaranteed losing. Once you get tired of losing, you'll go hard for that win. The shit you searching for out with is only found from within. Everything you've given to them, you got to do for yourself without reservation. A man's love will never be enough if what you seek is validation. I've been so desperate for love, I gave myself this intervention. Because all the days of crying was me crying for attention. All the days of picking me second and putting me's men first in the hopes that they would pick me and validate my worth. Because you know, being a woman is certain goals you got to hit in life, right? It doesn't matter how accomplished you are if you ain't getting a wife, right? It doesn't matter how pretty you are. You could be cute, fine, gorgeous, maybe find someone you think is solid and they'll leave after your baby. I wrote this poem to save me from a cycle of mistakes. Putting my heart in situations where it's guaranteed to break. Signing up to put on shoes knowing my feet will never fit them then complain about the pain when I walk so I could play the victim. We do this to ourselves. It's a flaw, I must admit. How many times have you given him a bid for it out when you knew he wasn't shit? How many times did you decide to stay after he told you what it was, but you stuck around unsatisfied trying to change him just because? Because you don't feel valuable. Not enough to walk away. So you tie your value into your ability to make him stay? But why does it matter if he stays? If you got to put up a front, yeah, he's laying next to you, but you're not getting what you want. You want love. You want loyalty. You want better than what you're used to. You want to finally experience what it's like to be loved when a love involved is mutual. You want a man who embodies what men are and you can say he's yours with pride. You want to scream it from the mountaintops to love. You ain't got to hide and you deserve that. I know you don't always feel that way, but you could be loved on your level. You'll be surprised the type of energy you attract when you decide you're not going to settle. You're going to get all that when you let go of the self-doubt and let the self-love intervene. Because after we go through this intervention, let's make a game plan to get clean and call it rehab. The steps you have to take to make sure that you learn. No more accepting what's been given to you. You're going to get the love you earn. Step one is healing. Because baby girl, after all of this is due, before you can find a man you want, you got to fall in love with you. You got to stay single. I know just hearing that you got a little bit annoyed, love. 
but filling your bed with different men ain't never gonna fill that void, love. See, you keep thinking this is about dating and choosing better picks, but it's something broke inside of you that a man will never fix, and you gotta address that now before you end up in the worst place. Cause it was never about what he did, it's why you chose him in the first place. It's something fucked up within you that the men you pick are revealing, only women that feel damaged keep choosing men in need of healing. And what does it say about your heart if you keep putting it up for grabs? You constantly feel empty cause you trying to give away what you don't have. Them seeds that you've been sowing were never theirs to reap. You've been handing out parts of your soul God intended for you to keep in. I can only keep it 100 that it's something that you lack. For you to keep giving your heart to men that will never love you back, this goes for me. This goes for you. It's a hard truth I had to mention before we seek to fall in love. Let's do a self-love intervention. So, I'm gonna take y'all through the timeline with me. I wrote that poem at the end of 2020. And you know how at the end of the year, you always like, I am going to leave, that's it, it's a new year, I'm done, I gave myself the intervention. I was right back with that nigga two months later, and we dragged that shit out for over a year again, and then a year later, I wrote the follow-up piece after sitting there thinking, um, you know, I got some shit that I need to work out in myself, right? I, I picked up from New York, I moved to Texas, I got away from him, but I was still talking to him. And then I started dating other people when the similar situations kept happening to me, so I had to figure out like, yeah, I don't know if it's still me or if it's the men that asked to date me. Because if this is what love feels like, I'm gonna need my next nigga to hate me. Because you claim you love me so much, but then I get your ass to kiss, I wanted love, but I don't want it if it ever feels like this. And I was doing so good, healing, minding my business on my own. Now I'm up crying over you at 2 a.m. just wishing I had stayed alone because these fucking men will see you thriving and doing everything just fine and come up with a plan of attack to figure out how they're going to waste your time. I had a preview of how this was going to play out. I should have left you six months in because trying to keep you as a lover now and lost she was a friend because truth be told, this shit is triggering some patterns from my past and once you start moving like my ex, that's when I start to hate your ass because I've been through this. All them years together to end up as enemies until you walk away with nothing but some good dick and bad memories. I swear these men ain't worth the energy. And now use the word love in vain, making excuses for endless fuck shit and normalize inflicting pain. Ladies, what are you supposed to do if you feel broken to the core? Because now your ex is getting married to the girl he left you for. And the nigga that you moved on with picked another person too. Never being the one chosen got you feeling like it's you. Is it true? I know I got some shit with me because I be sowing seeds I'm never going to reap. Giving my all the situationships that were never mine to keep in. I never addressed the red flags right away no matter how many times I tried. Like staying after he cheats but then walking away because he lied. We never leave for the big things. We just let him keep on pouring until it overflows the cup. Because men never seem to understand that all those little things add up. And fellas, take all the time you need to find yourself because we are all a work in progress. But all we ever asked was you not to break us in the process. Women shouldn't have to be casualties to the growth of men. Because after all them years getting used, y'all look for love and comfort in the same arms of the woman you left beaten down and emotionally bruised. And I've been hurt so many times that at this point, if it's love left in me, I'm too scared to show it. And the fucked up part is I'll probably push my husband away and I'll never even know it. I ain't bitter yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I be telling y'all it's healing time, but I'm hypocritical. Because in the process of healing, I fell in love and ended up between jaded as fuck and cynical. I ended up in the arms of someone who could lie straight to my face, tell you they love you on Tuesday, and by Thursday, it's another woman at your place, yo. Loving men was never safe. This shit is dangerous as hell. Because they'll use words and actions to show you how they feel, but you can never really tell. Because how are you supposed to tell if he's a mistake or if he's the one? When they've mastered the art of pretending to care just to break your heart for fun, I swear I'm done. I'm done filling up tanks that have no problem with leaving me empty. And as bad as I wanna be in love right now, I don't got another heartbreak left in me. I don't got another I don't wanna hurt you for men that have no intention to ever stay, then a few years later try to spin a block claiming I'm the one that got away and I don't be having shit to say. I'm sure all the ladies can relate. How many of us are the type of women that men learn to love too late? Because when they have you in their kids, like they never seem to know how to act. And once you don't give a fuck no more, that's when they begging for you back. Like, listen, I speak a love over you so powerful that it builds you up and holds you down. May the next man you love not have to win you back because he gonna get it right the first time around. May the next time you fall in love be the one that make you understand why I ain't work with no one else. May it be a love that loves you so much that you fall in love with yourself, my love. You don't always need help. We constantly internalize the shit that they do. 
Sometimes you be trying to take accountability when it wasn't even you. Now you sitting in the chair with your therapist trying to fix yourself and get your confidence strong, trying to unpack where you went wrong when it was that nigga all along. Allow yourself the space to heal, my love. Allow yourself the time to grieve. Because sometimes the only thing you can do to fix it is pack up your things and leave. And I wish you so much safety on this journey, babe. No one has intentions on saving us. So guard your heart when you go back outside, my love, because loving men, it's dangerous. This is serious. We can make you delirious. You should have a healthy fear of us, because too much of us is dangerous. It's so dangerous. I'm so dangerous. So like I said, when you go back outside, I was not about to spend another fucking year writing sad-ass poetry. I was like, I need all of my licks back. All you niggas is going to pay. <laughs> All of you niggas is going to pay. Y'all about to pay. Listen, we're doing this shit for little saint. <laughs> so when I went back outside, I was not my best self. I was not. And I was happy about it. I am happy about it. Fuck these niggas. No. <laughs> And then all of my exes started ganging up on me because they see me all across social media talking about how I've been done so wrong. And like literally in one week's time, about five niggas called me and was like, bitch, it's you. We are the common denominator. This is your fifth book you're writing this year. And I was like, huh? am I the drama? <laughs> so I had to write a piece in light of that, which I'll close out my set. I said, now, there's one thing in common all my exes could agree. I sent a lot of blame their way, but a lot of it was me. Woe is me. I'm heartbroken again. Man, I feel like that topic's done the way. It could be all these niggas. Maybe I'm the toxic one. I admit, I play a lot of games like being passive aggressive over text, pretending to pour my heart out to niggas and just be using them for sex. I admit, I'm full of shit sometimes. I tell only half the situation, painting a story in my favor. I'm a master of manipulation. Y'all be working on my mental and emotional healing. On Twitter posting, fuck these niggas when I'm really the villain. Attachment issues like crazy, I'm always trying to work it out. And I'll be crying over niggas I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> All eight timelines overlapped. I juggled every single one. I never want to settle down because I'll be having too much fun. Yeah, I'll be having men invested sending I love yous my way. Everybody wants to cuff, but I never even stay. I'm always pushing them away. Then get them back just to boost my self-esteem. Because once they fall in love, that's when it's time to cut them clean because I don't know what commitment means. I just be trying to live my life and I can't think of much worse things than being someone's wife. Yeah, you know, I never get my heart invested, but I'll show up on the show. <laughs> Say I'm looking for love so I can get some head and then I go. I try to keep it casual. But that doesn't always work and I've transformed into a nigga after years of being hurt, yeah. Submission was my first language. I used to be the softest flower. But every time I let my guard down, another nigga took my power. Every time I tried to love them, they left me with nothing but hate. They robbed me of my softness and put some hardship on my plate. So if you see me treating men like shit, there ain't no need to reprimand me. You ain't got to agree with my moves in order for you to understand me. Just understand when you were kitten, them wolves won't see you as a feast. So I unleashed my inner lion and transformed into a beast. Yeah. I, I used to want love. Fuck it. Maybe I still do. But what's the point in giving men love when the men you love gonna hurt you too? Yes, love itself is a risk, that's something that we all know, but as soon as you start to like a nigga, that's when them red flags start to glow. And I never reaped what I sow from giving men my heart. So if I'm gonna end up hurting anyway, I might as well just play a part. I'm not sitting at home crying no more cause a man won't treat me right if he play in my face in the morning, I'll have a new nigga by that night, fuck y'all thought. We wasn't gonna adapt and play this game to win. You niggas kept moving like bitches, so we started moving like men. The balance of power is all off, I know. It's a lot we all need to rethink. I'll step back into my gender role, but you're going to have to go first. Thank you. I'm toxic. I know I ain't shit no more. This ain't the first time that I heard it. But I ain't never do no nigga bad that ain't wholeheartedly deserve it. If I violated you, you earned it. And I say it with my chest. You only get me in my worst after taking advantage of my best. So am I toxic or we toxic, nigga? I'm your woman. I'm a reflection of you. If you don't like the shit I'm on, then maybe change the shit you do. Let's level up the playing field to see how you like it when your feelings tied. Now you don't want sending me paragraphs. Sorry, baby. My phone died. I got you. I got you. Posting quotes and writing poetry. 
You burning sage or seeking healing all. Come and give me a kiss. That karma got you in your feelings. Y'all be so loud when bashing women, telling everyone you hate her, but conveniently skip over the fact that it was your bullshit that made her. So now we toxic. The whole dating pool. Nobody wants to give they all. Passing our pain back and forth, playing trauma volleyball. Y'all hurt us, then we hurt y'all. We not understanding the assignment. And the cycle going to continue until we all get in alignment. He's so toxic, she's so toxic. One keeps saying it's the other. If we don't fix our toxic bonds, then our dynamic won't recover. We keep talking about who's toxic when love was meant to be pure. And if hurting each other was our poison, then maybe forgiveness is the cure. Thank you. My name is Kara J. Thank you. All right, say one, two, three, fuck these niggas. I had to, I had to. I'm sorry, Lewis. All, all of them except for Lewis. <laughs> you can find me all across social media at All Things Kara J. I'm excited. Thank you guys for having me. This is my first time featuring in Philly. <laughs> Lewis said, Kara, I want you to come. I was like, I will be there. I have bought a few books with me. If anybody wants a copy of my books, Breaking Point and Healing Point, $20. Give me. <laughs> in Harlem, we say, give me $20. Give me $20. Give me $20. Thank you. <laughs>